Well, hello again. Uh, my last video, we started a new series, a what if series. And I explained a little bit, if you haven't seen it, this is kind of a developing video series. So it does help to watch the one before, but I will always try to recap a little bit what took place, why we're doing this, um, what it can do for you uh, in every video. So uh, I'm, I'm a middle school history and Bible teacher. And if there's anything that middle schoolers are really good at doing is asking what if questions. And I thought this is this is a great opportunity for us to kind of look at what people believe about the Bible and reasons why people don't believe in the Bible. Maybe those that believe something else and, and throw a what if question in there uh, to say, you know, what if the stuff that the Bible says is true? Uh, most of the time when a middle schooler is asking what if, they're trying to find a scenario that best fits what they already believe or want, right? Uh, th they can receive a truth, and then they'll kind of throw in a, well, what if this, though? Or, or, or what if we do this instead? And it's always a what if that best suits them. And maybe even takes away some consequences uh, that they have earned and are about to receive. Uh, so they throw in a what if question. So I've decided to look at uh, another big area of debate, I guess, still, you know, uh, the idea of a God or no God creator or um, spontaneous event to our creation, uh, because there are people that are living as if our creation was just a spontaneous event. And, and, and I did this to just ask them this question, what if? If you are someone that believes in spontaneous creation, I just ask you to consider for a second, what if? What if God did create the heavens and the earth? And that's what I talked about last week. The idea of idea of you know, what it would look like, first of all, what it means. And, and, I, and I had a great conversation this week with my middle schoolers. Uh, and I told them, I'm, I'm doing this because there are people that say they believe something. And if you believe that, then every decision that you make in life has to um, kind of come from that belief system. It has to at least make sense to that belief system. So if you don't believe that there's a creator and there's a spontaneous event, then, the, then there's a certain way that you're going to live in response to that belief system. And some people aren't actually living um, perfectly, I guess, according to that belief system. They, they try to mesh a couple belief systems together to best, I guess, give them peace in this life. Uh, so if you don't believe in a creator, but you believe in a spontaneous event, there's, there's going to be a way that you're going to live in response to that, and you need to be consistent. The same way as if you believe that there's a creator and there's a purpose behind his creation and you have a purpose in this life, then uh, and, and you find that purpose through the creator and the, and the purpose that he created you for, uh, then there's a then there's a specific response for you in that belief, and that and that's what we talked about last week. And so, what well, what I did then after I had that wonderful I mean I, t I had a wonderful conversation with my uh, middle school Bible class about this, and they had some great insight into all of this, and they get it. They got I saw they, they had some great questions. Um, how long should they wait for their purpose to be revealed to them? Uh, just just so many so many great questions. And then the next day, you know, after, after we've kind of settled on that, well, if we believe that there is a creator and that creator is God, then the next question is, what if God really does know what's best for us? Okay, uh, because in creation, in the beginning, and, and I talked a little bit Genesis chapter 1 last week, because that's really what it is in the beginning God created, right? Uh, but he did, he did create Adam and Eve, and he made it kind of simple for them, okay? He created Adam and Eve, and then and then he just made it very simple for them to not, uh, what not to do. And he didn't give them a lot of do's and don'ts. He just gave them uh, a pretty much a, here's what you do. You work the garden, and you be fruitful and multiply. It's a pretty pretty simple list, right? That they were to walk with God every day, and they are to, they're able to have that kind of personal relationship with God. They are provided for with the garden. They, they have to do a little work to keep the garden up, right? 
and they're to be fruitful and multi multiply. I mean, who wouldn't want that to-do list for the day, okay? I mean, that's that's pretty cool. Uh, and then all he did was to say, okay, now listen, you, you don't eat from a specific tree. So he told them, don't eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. So he said, do not eat from this tree. And, and that was the only do not, okay? Now, here what I want to tell you is, they did not have parents that would give them ill advice or they weren't a result of a cycle of bad parenting because that's that's what my eighth grader said is that you know that like well we want to believe that our parents know what's best for us but sometimes they're what they're telling us is um, a result of a cycle of just bad parenting and a lot of my eighth graders believed that their parents want what's best for them, but not all of them know what's best for them. And so sometimes what they're saying is not really going to end up being what's best for them. Adam and Eve did not have that experience that we have today. They, they didn't have negative influences or poor parenting, okay? They also didn't have social media because social media tries to tell us what's best for us. I mean, Honestly, there's um, self-help books. There's uh, all, all, just a bunch of different sites that you can go to. And, and just honestly, daily, hourly, you can get a fix on what the world thinks that you should be doing uh, anyway on, on many social media platforms and telling you what you should or should not do. And, and sometimes we, you know, we follow those bad examples or that bad advice of, well, this is what's best for you, okay? Well, let me see what the, let me get my, let me get another, um, someone else's advice or input to see what's best for me. So we have that. Adam and Eve didn't have that. Adam and Eve did not have social media to influence their decision. All they had was that they are not to eat from the tree that's in the middle of the garden, okay? They are not to eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, okay? That, that was they had from God, don't do this. And here comes Satan, right? Satan comes in, and, and and of course God says, and this is what he says in Genesis chapter two. All right, he he tells them, um, uh, and I was just reading it, and I, okay, so here we go, Genesis chapter two, and he he says. You must not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, for when you eat of it, you will surely die. Now, I ask my students, if your parents told you something that you knew would cause you harm, would you not do it? Like, for example, don't put your hand in the fire. Most students were like, yeah, yeah. I mean, obviously, we our parents say don't do this because they know what's best for us and they don't want us to get hurt, so we don't do it. And then I say, well, what about when your parents tell you to not do something, um, but you're like, well, that's not going to hurt me, and it actually kind of sounds fun. So they want to do it because they second-guess their parents, and they see other people possibly doing it. So at that moment, they stop believing that their parents know what's best for them, okay? And here, God tells Adam and Eve, don't eat from this tree. I know what's best for you. Don't eat from this tree. And here comes the serpent, and, and he starts kind of playing on God's words, right? And and Eve knew. Eve knew what God said. She even quotes back to Satan. Yes, he said, if we eat this, um, we will surely die. And Satan's like, no, 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 you won't die. Listen, God knows that when you eat it, your eyes will be opened, right? And you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So, so that's what Satan... And in Genesis chapter 3, this is what he's kind of throwing at Eve. He's like, God just doesn't want you to be like him. He doesn't want you to be as smart and, and all-knowing as him. And that's kind of what lures students or, or children into wanting, uh, that, you know, like their friends are like, well, your parents just don't want you to have the same fun that they did when they were young, right? And a lot of kids think that. They're like, well, if our parents did it, then maybe... Maybe we should do it as well. And so here Adam and Eve are like, well, God knows good and evil. Why can't we? Okay. And at that moment, you know, Eve takes, gives to Adam. He takes and 
and then all of a sudden they discover that they're naked and they shame enters. Shame did not exist before this. They cover themselves up. And and it's again, it's one of those moments where if you're a parent, you've said to your child who you've told not to do something and they do it. And they are some kind of um, negative outcome comes from that. And you're like, see, I told you not to do that. Right? So th this, is, this is kind of the world that we live in, though, right? But see, here's the thing. Even in Adam and Eve, and I don't know, we struggle. So Adam and Eve had nothing else around them to tell them. And it, and it was really in them to want to, want to, to know more. And what they failed to do, what they failed to do because Satan moved them this way, was to trust that God knows best. And, and in that moment, they, their distrust led to sin and, and the results of sin, what we see daily, pain, suffering, disease, death. So here's, here's where I'm going to go with this for you. Okay, there are things, you've probably mapped out some things in your life, and there's some things that you enjoy doing in your life, and that you know that God has maybe, or, or explicitly in his word, said you shouldn't be doing these things. And you question them, and you're like, yeah, but you know, my friends are doing it, or my parents did it, and you're not really trusting that God knows what's best for you. And I want to ask you now, and this is, I asked this to my students, okay? First of all, I asked them, what would your life look like if you started responding? You know, first of all, if they believed that their parents knew what was best. This only pertained to, pertained to those students that believed that their parents knew what was best for them. I said, okay, so once you know that your parents know what's best for you, what would your life look like if you started living like your parents knew what was best for you? And one student said, well, we'd start to look more like our parents. I thought, man, that was such a great observation because if we started living like we believe that God knows what's best for us, who are we going to start to look like, right? We're going to start to look like his children. We're going to look like his offspring, how he wanted us to be. And, and I know in your life, there are some areas where you believe you know what's best. We all do. I've been there. I know. Um, but we don't. I promise you, we don't. Go back to the last video. If you believe that God created everything, that he created everything with a purpose, and that creator has to know what's best for his creation. So I ask you, what would your life look like if you actually not not just say that you know that god knows best but you started living that truth in your life i challenge you with that i challenge you to look at your life daily well if i believed that god knew best about um, where i should work what i should do with my money uh, what i should do with my spare time um, if i believe that he knows best then what will those things look like how will my life change and do that do that and um you know you can share comments below how it works let me know it struggles it's gonna be struggles uh, but i encourage you this week just ask yourself ask yourself you know what what if i don't know what's best what if what if social media doesn't know what's best what if maybe even my parents didn't know what's best what if god knows what's best start living your life that way well, hope you have a, a great week and um, we're going to keep moving forward with this discussion in my next video. God bless.